And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be poured. When you come back, you can become a prophet. You know, it's, 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 a, it's against the law of the Spirit that you are in God's presence and you are not excited. You know, when a fish steps into water, suddenly the fish comes alive because the water is not just its habitat. The water is the fish's stronghold. You can deal with the fish anywhere else but in the water so the fish knows the moment it steps into water it has come to its own place of advantage you have been toiling around all day now you have come to the presence this is your place of greatest advantage so that understanding and consciousness alone should quicken a level of assurance that makes you begin to dare the devil <laughs> you know you may be feeble before you came but now you can tell the devil you made a mistake I have stepped into my stronghold <laughs> see this is why don't wait for somebody to excite you don't even wait for the atmosphere to be charged be charged that's what you do and when the place is not yet charged as you would expect what you do is that you stare yourself in the spirit you stare yourself in the spirit. Can we try it for another one minute? Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, you reign. You reign, you reign. Kadosh, you are mighty.
consciousness is everything. I'm telling you, if you can tune yourself in the spirit, even in the valley of dry bones, you can pick the vibrations of heaven. Oh, yeah. He said, I was in the isle called Patmos. And I heard the voice of a trumpet. Why? Because I was in the spirit. He was in the valley of death. But he could still hear whispers. His consciousness. I was in the spirit on the last day. I heard a voice like a trumpet. Everything depends on consciousness. Go ahead and tell the Lord I received the word for the season. I received my word for the season. I received my word. Is it until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him? Until the time that his word came. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Father, we thank you again for the privilege to receive from your spirit. We ask that you bring us illumination. We ask that you bring us strength. We ask that you shift us in the spirit and cause us to be more prepared and ready for the things that you are bound to do in our midst, in our generation, and in our world. Take all the praise, take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Sit down for a few minutes. Again, it's my honor and privilege this evening to stand before you. I wasn't expecting this. Thank you, sir, for the privilege. <laughs> I don't take it for granted at all. I'll just be sharing with us for 15 minutes to set the coordinates before our father comes up tonight to bring us strong meat. God, I've been bringing very strong emphasis our way. And when wars like this begin to come to us, it's actually not a place to be totally excited it's a time to look inward and to consider what god is saying because every time god begins to speak to a generation that generation is set on course to fulfill an agenda that is eternal and on the strength of that if a generation fails to carry out the responsibility that provoked or necessitated the coming of the word of the lord to them those wars themselves will stand against them in the day of judgment so when God speaks like this, because you have heard, you are implicated. So it's a time for sober reflection. It's a time to reconsider your stand in God and to take very strong, decisive steps to align with the agenda of God's Spirit, to find your place in God in order to be relevant in that which God is doing. And this is why understanding becomes very important. The euphoria alone is not enough. There must be accurate understanding first to discern what God wants to do. Secondly, to find out the role you have to play in it. And then thirdly, to find out what it takes to remain relevant in that which God is doing. It is for this reason that we labor to bring light and illumination from the word of the Lord. Not just to do the exegesis, but to open our understanding to know the urgency of the spirit to open our understanding to know the place we occupy and what God is doing and also to bring us to that place of responsibility to know what we have to do to be relevant with God because when God does things that are transgenerational most times it's not necessarily that a man have been allocated or ordained to fulfill it by all costs the reason is because if that man fails the agenda of God will not fail so when God is doing something that affects a generation, it's not tied to the head of one man. Even if that man is captured in ordination, if he fails, God will still proceed. So beyond individual ordinations at a time like this, alignment is superior. Because even if you are not captured in what God wants to do, if you press by alignment, you will discover there are many vacuums in the spirit. And as you step into that vacuum, an assignment that carries the name of somebody, the person who violates it, you can step into it to fulfill that agenda of God. Because the agenda of God is superior to a man. It is transgenerational. What God is doing began in God and it will end in God. Men are just given the privilege to participate in what God is doing in order for a counsel that was in the heart of the Father before the foundation of the world to find expression. So first, it's a privilege to be a part of it. Secondly, it's a responsibility to be a part of it. Because if you, if you are not 
at the end of time, you will discover you wasted. Hallelujah. So this evening, just to add a little to what has been shared, I want to share with us what to do to join in God and to stand where God wants you to stand. And it's going to be for 15 minutes, so I will just be speaking very fast and touching a little things here and there to help us get this clearly. I've said many times that God speaks from mountain tops. So most times when men remain on ground, they will not hear the alarm of the spirit. That is why we labor to come into the presence. That's why we labor to come into the atmosphere and the circumference where the alarm of the spirit is uttered. And to journey and become relevant in what God is doing. You know, there are beautiful prophecies that have gone forth. There are impartations that have gone forth. There are even specific words that have come to us in the course of this meeting. But that's not enough. There's a responsibility that every one of us must take upon ourselves in order to come to that place where God will necessarily use us. That's what I want to share with us this afternoon, this evening. And I want to read from Psalm 23. He said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Let me draw some things out here quickly. The first place a man must get to in order to be part of what God is doing is the place of the still waters. The reason is because it is the place of the still water that the soul is restored. If the soul is not restored, you will come into what God is doing with the garbage that you carried in your head. And you will think the agenda of God will be fulfilled by your understanding or your terms. But God does not function at your realm. You must have to journey into the realm of God. You know, what we don't understand is that on account of the fall, there is a record of death that has latched itself to our souls. What restoration does is to remove that record of death that is in your soul so that you can see things from the realm of God. You know, most times you come for a meeting like this, you wonder, why does everybody have to share? The idea is not to expound scriptures necessarily. The reason is because when we gather, we are like lively stones in the spirit. Every one of us is a crystal and there is a light that we emit from our spirit. So when witnesses begin to come from different stones in the assembly, what it does is that it produces a prism of light that brings corporate witness that has the stature to build the body of Christ. That is why he gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. The word perfecting is to equip with light. There is a quality of witness that comes from the crystals of God that is assembled in lively stones God has built through process. And when this light array themselves, what happens is that they delete the record of death that is in a man's soul. So if a man does not journey to a place of stillness, even if an angel appears and tells him you will take the word of God to South Africa, he will discover at the age of 50 that he is still in Benue State. The reason is because he will want to do the biddings of God at the realm of his understanding. And even the word of God will become powerless in that man's life. He said you have made the word of God of none effect by your tradition. Those are records of death. When the spirit of God begins to draw you to participate in advancing an eternal agenda, you must of necessity look upon the scrolls of the testimony to find out what God wants to do and how he wants to do it. And the way you can do that is by having a restoration of soul. And a restoration of soul is not to receive a new teaching and a new understanding. A restoration of soul is to come to a point where your mind becomes like the mind of Christ so you can judge as Christ judged. And what brings a man there is the place of stillness. What is the place of stillness? In Genesis chapter 18 from verse 1, he said, Abraham sat at the door of the tent. He sat at the door of the tent and he looked upon three men. Now, the Bible called them men, but when Abraham saw them, he saw God. The place of stillness is a place a man comes to where he departs 
from the influence of this age and he begins to sense the influence of another generation of another realm of another dispensation and the way to achieve the place of stillness is not in a meeting this is why when meetings like this end our journeys begin the place of stillness is a journey you, you get into by separating yourself and saturating yourself with God consciously until every attachment of your soul with the world system is cut off. It is not an act, it's a state. Sometimes it takes meditation, sometimes it takes praying, sometimes it takes waiting upon the Lord. But by all means, to be part of God's agenda, you must come to that place where your mind shifts from what you think and know to what God thinks and what God knows. This is what makes a people relevant with God. And most times, many don't take the responsibility. So they receive prophecies. We war with prophecies and they are beautiful. But beyond it, what state have you attained in the spirit? Many leave meetings like this and right from the door, everything they heard leaves their spirit. The reason is because they can't come to that point to internalize the emphasis of God. There is still distraction, there is still noise in their spirit man. So what happens to them is, although they are the ones God chooses, but they can't be relevant. That's why most times when God visits a man, the next requirement is separation. When the angel of the Lord came to Mary, Mary departed from her place and went to another place. And the place Mary went to was on the mountain. When he came to Elizabeth, the first thing that happened is that interactions began in the spirit. And Mary told Elizabeth, my soul doth magnify the Lord, for my spirit hath rejoiced in the God of my salvation. Mary had begun the protocol of internal operation. She had journeyed into a place in God where she was assured of that which God had said. Many never get to the place of stillness. They hear prophecies, they run with them, they tell everybody. But that prophecy itself had not even taken root in their spirit man. So when circumstances come, what happens is that they forget what God told them. And the things, their circumstances tell them become loud. And when those things become loud, those things compare and condition them to function by the realities that those circumstances bring their way. The reason is because they never get to the place of stillness. David knew he was God's choice. But David began to teach us how he entered into that place of authority that he had with God. He said the first thing is that he followed the Spirit of God until he came to the place of stillness. And what David knew, the indicator that David had that he had come to the place of stillness was that his soul was restored. When you come to the place of stillness, as you depart from there, you may not feel nothing, but you will discover that your philosophies are beginning to change. Your ideologies are beginning to change. You can go to the place of stillness and come out, and what you are coming out with is to empty your bank account. It doesn't look like the revival God is speaking about, but restoration of soul is taking place. You can go to the place of stillness and come back, and God can tell you, go somewhere and serve for six months. It may not look intelligent. In fact, sometimes it looks as if you are wasting your time. But when God wants to move a man forward, he uses principles that are a mystery in darkness. So the devil will study you. He will not even understand where God is going. God may tell you to journey this way, but the destination is there. The reason is because God doesn't need your footstep to determine your speed. He said the hand of God came upon Elijah. He outran the chariots of Ahab into, even unto Jezreel. Elijah was on the mountain praying for many hours. Ahab had gone ahead, but he was in the place of stillness. Many things happened. He saw an earthquake. He saw fire. He saw a, a strong wind until the still small voice came. When that voice comes, speed becomes your inheritance. Most times if we struggle with things, we are distracted. And we can never receive what God says is our portion. The place of stillness is the place where we behold him as he is. If you check your heart now, you'll be shocked the noise that is there. And one of the ways to check whether there is noise in your heart is to ask God for a specific thing. If you want to check how noise in your heart is, if not to go and lock yourself behind closed door, ask God for one specific thing. You will discover sometimes it takes two weeks for you to hear it. Not because God said it after two weeks, but because that was when your heart was emptied of noise. The moment your heart is emptied of noise, you discover the voice of God becomes clear. Because the voice of God is not clear because it's loud. The voice of God is clear because it's distinct. 
So many things conflicting with the voice of God give way. When the man comes to the place of stillness, he has begun the journey of relevance. Many believers are noisy. You can come for a conference like this and waste all the privileges. Because you have not journeyed to the place of stillness. And if you have not journeyed to the place of stillness, your soul cannot be restored. He said, the Lord restored my soul. That is where a man begins to look like God. Because in the place of stillness, we behold him as he is. Everything has been removed. The veil has been removed. We can see him. The second thing the psalmist revealed to us is that he leads you in the path of righteousness. You can't be part of what God is doing if your life is laden with iniquity. Meanwhile, you can't stop this thing by willpower. Even your will is compromised. The reason you are a slave of what you are a slave of is because that is your predominant mindset. That's what I call the record of death. When the stillness of oppression is achieved, righteousness becomes a lifestyle. Righteousness. This is manifest righteousness. Most times, the reason people never make it is not because God is not willing to make them. The reason people never make it is that they can't summon the energy for their destiny. So in the day they should bring forth, that their strength will be lacking. And spiritual energy is imparted from within. It is a function of intercourse with the Holy Spirit. If a man's mind is not renewed, if a man's soul is not restored, on the day of destiny he will be weak. You will see people you began with, you will say, ah, I know that I was better than this man. It is not who is better that ends well. It is who is empowered. It was in the place of stillness, the angel appeared to Elijah and said, Arise, eat, the journey is great. Thou restored my soul. Thou leadest me in the path of righteousness. This was a man journeying into greatness. He is telling you the articles of greatness. That if a man doesn't truly have a testimony before God, that man has no part in God's agenda. You know, these things are terrible because it's not about what we can do. It's not even about what we do. It's about the validation of God from Zion. Because you can do bigger, better than every other person. He said he served God and did many things but not with a perfect heart. You can do better than everybody. But at the end of the day, you are disqualified. Because you didn't walk in the path of righteousness. And the reason you must have to walk in the path of righteousness is for his own integrity. Say, for my name's sake. It's for his name's sake that the path of righteousness is a must. Because the assignment is not your assignment. It is his assignment. And the only way a man can be a partaker of what God is doing is when it is done according to God's standard. That is when the name of the Lord will be glorified. You can pursue a lot of things and think when you get this, when you get that, things will happen. Things may happen, but you will still be disqualified. So the indicator that David began to draw our attention to, it is the path that a man is walking in. Is it righteousness or iniquity? It's not enough to become popular and famous. If you are popular and famous, men will clap, but the angels will watch you and they will know you are disqualified even before you began. Because the journey is not only horizontal, it's also vertical. Horizontal journey is the ground we cover in the natural. Vertical journey is our travel into the place where God dwells. There are realms of corruption and there are realms of incorruptibility. As you begin to travel vertically in God, you will discover you will enter places until you come to where virgin wisdom dwells. The place where virgin wisdom dwells is the realm of incorruptibility. That is where the, the works of men are revealed to them. It's a migration in the direction of God. There are so many things that we will do that will be right, but we will still not qualify for the reward if our path is not the path of righteousness. So in order for your labor not to be in vain, the psalmist is advising you now that for you to be relevant and to be part of what God is doing, your path must be the path of righteousness. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, the other time I was telling God, I say, God, thank you. Thank you for covering us with the glory. Because all these prophets that give word of knowledge, 
If they were to see our mistakes, it would have been a big problem. <laughs> Especially when you are struggling with things and God is still helping you. Imagine when they are giving prophetic word. And you know every word of knowledge begins with your error. Nobody will ask for prophetic word. <laughs> if they say, Mike, I'll say, ah, Mike is going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the reason is because by God's by reason of God's mercy, when it begins with you, he tells you things to encourage you. So that you will know that regardless of what's happening, God is still with you. If God were to tell you, <laughs> when they say Nathaniel, you say absent, sir. <laughs> Prophet, I'm not around, I'm not around. If you must give this word, give it in the closet. <laughs> But you see, he said you have come into the place of the cloud of witnesses. If it's only men that see you, it wouldn't have been a challenge. But the problem is that this race you are running, there were men that ran that path, that same path you were running. Do you know what a mantle is? A mantle is a dimension of God that a man trapped. Sometimes it takes years to download a mantle. What you call a mantle is a dimension that somebody trapped in Christ. So he leaves it for his generation as an inheritance. That's why fathers leave inheritances. One of the inheritance fathers leave for a generation are mantles. And sometimes God tries a man for many years for him to be able to download a mantle. So the dealings of God for five years, for ten years is actually a downloading process. And that man will have to be guided in the path of righteousness for a long time because that mantle is downloading. God wants to leave an inheritance for a generation, so He makes the path of a man narrow. And as that man joining that narrow path, it looks as if he's been disadvantaged. No, no, no. That man is downloading something for 50 generations. And when the man graduates and completes that downloading process, that thing becomes what he handles. If he's leaving, he can say, Take, take it. You may not need to go through the process of downloading again. He went through that process. David is saying for a man to be mighty with God, he must be guided in the path of righteousness because there are many things littered in the path of righteousness. Only the men who travel there can look upon them. They can look upon them. So these things becomes paths that men follow. The way of Enoch. The same way the way of Balaam is the way in darkness. There are ways and paths of righteousness that men carved in God. He said to be great and to be relevant, you must join in the path of righteousness. You know, these are the things that our generation don't want to hear. Because we want to shine, but we want to shine with our garbage. The reason is because your garbage is not revealed. If your garbages were revealed, nobody would want to stand in the pulpit. It will be few men you will find behind the pulpit. He said, join in the spirit. Thou leadeth me in the path. When your heart, when your soul is restored, you now hear him. He said, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot receive it. He said, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. That part of guidance that the Holy Ghost makes available is the part of righteousness. And then you come to places, you find things pertaining to your destiny, hanging on different corners. And you will come somewhere, you will pick something and you will hang it here. You will not even know when it's happening. But all of a sudden, you came somewhere, you touched somebody. And because you touched somebody, you have imparted a blessing. You will show up somewhere and a demon begins to cry. You will be wondering, oh, where did I study it? How does this thing happen? No, you didn't study it. It was part of the armory that they decorated you with as you joined in the path of righteousness. So that the day you reach for you to be used of God, you would have been fully dressed. Because you will need something to wear on your leg. You will need something on your hand. You will need something on your chest. The problem is that they are in the path of righteousness. You will see what the psalmist said. Because after he journeyed, a point came. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it is a concerted protocol in the spirit. First, the record of death must be deleted. So I migrate from what I know to what God knows. I am known as he is known. I journey from within me to within God. And as I enter there, God begins to lead me, to teach me his way. He said, when I have journeyed through this path, what is next is the devil will come. 
He said, but even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, fear is no longer a part of me. Because now I know, I know something. He had carried me through light. And because I understand the syllables of light, there is nothing darkness can bring that can take me unawares. Because the light will always shine in the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. These are journeys of becoming relevant with God. You know, we are talking about shaking. And if we are talking about shaking, there must be preparation. These are some of the articles of preparation that many will take for granted. If you are not prepared, nothing will be committed to you. Because many things that pertain to a generation are not a gift. They are entrustments. And no wise businessman entrusts assets to a charlatan. If you don't journey to the place of stillness, if you don't journey through the path of righteousness, if you come to the valley of the shadow of death, you will fall. You will fall. Because there are many ascenders there. For you to come there, you must become like light. So that darkness can't comprehend you. He said, the prince of this world, come to me. But he findeth nothing. I have journeyed through the path of righteousness. That's when God can tell you, you are a voice to South Africa. Even if the government of South Africa likes it or not, they can't stop you. Because it doesn't mean you must go and have a platform in South Africa. Even if you enter a cave in South Africa, the nation will come there. He said John was in the wilderness. The whole city went to him. There are few evangelists in scriptures like John. In fact, the strongest evangelists in scripture were John and Jonah. With one cry, they can silence the whole city. But this is the journey. There is a path of darkness that awaits and for men to walk through those paths, they must have traveled through the path of righteousness. It was that that taught us many years ago about Kadesh Benia, a place where princes fall. Because you can become a prince by inheritance, but to walk in the powers of a prince, you must have understood the path of righteousness. Bend down for a second and talk to God. You know, many people have not even come to a still place where their soul is restored. You are internally the way you were five years ago. But because you heard prophetic word, you say, this year I will manifest. Where? How? <laughs> Do you notice what David told us in this scripture? When he came to the valley of the shadow of death, he began to show us some of the arsenals that he picked when he walked through the path of righteousness. He told us about the rod. He said, thy staff and thy rod, they comfort me. So the reason he journeyed as if darkness does not exist, he picked the rod while he was walking the path of righteousness. And that rod, if you stretch it, it can bring down a civilization. That is the type of rod that parts the Red Sea. So when Moses came to the Red Sea, he said, Lord, he said, don't turn to me, go forward. Stretch forth thy rod. Because that rod is not a staff. That rod means many things in God. And on one occasion, he struck the rod at the sea. And the Bible said, with the blast of his nostrils. That means the rod is the breath of God. But you will see a staff. No. Anything in the path of righteousness is part of God. And when he stretches the rod at the Red Sea, it became a blast of his nostrils. Another time, he came to a rock. They needed water. No, you have something. That rod is God. <laughs> The things you are picking from the path of righteousness are the things that make you invincible. He said, even that thing you carry is favor. My cup, he run it over. So when people are praying, I need money for ministry. Some people don't pray money. Because in the path of righteousness, there was a garment of favor that came upon them. People were in captivity for 430 years. He said, go to the Egyptian, collect their gold. How will you do it? I was your slave. I will now come say, give me your gold. You have been clothed with favor. And he said he gave favor to the Egyptians and the Israelites and they spoiled the Egyptian. That's when a man's cup runs over. Ask the Lord to help you to journey. Ask the Lord to help you to journey. God is not unfair. He is not unjust. What are the records of death that are still in your soul? They must be deleted. You need a format a format of the records of death 
What are the things that still hold you bound? They must break off. So when you come to the valley of the shadow of death, that is where you shine. You know a doctor cannot shine until they are sick patients. So it is in the valley of the shadow of death that sun shine. What the world calls problem, that is what occasions our emergence. And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be taught. When you come back, you can become a prophet.